All right, hi, welcome back. All right, I have added to my work of art here. Um, we're going to deal with this quadrant, which is what's called the symbolic universe. Uh, symbolic universe, let me define it for you. It is everything that holds meaning according to a society. Everything that holds meaning. And the symbolic universe, you probably won't be shocked to find out, is comprised of symbols. Symbols defined as things that hold meaning. All right, simple as that. Everything that holds meaning according to a society, so a, a huge collection of symbols, is what we would call the symbolic universe. Um, and I want to, I'm, gonna, I, I'm going to give you an example of it, and the example is this. You could probably see what that is. Um, here is the point about this. This is a key. And you know what this is. This is a thing that holds meaning, and you understand, you can probably tell it's a car key. Um, here's the point about the symbolic universe. Because we have assigned particular meaning to this physical object, we know what to do with this. But there's nothing inherently car starty about this thing. If you look at it, I mean, it, if, if I were not a part of this particular society, I would probably think this is a weapon. I mean, it's kind of pointy, it's moderately sharp. If I, if I wanted to, I could probably stab somebody with this. But almost never is that what this is used for. Today, millions of times, somebody looked at this physical thing and without even thinking about it, um, processed that this is a key and its, it, its use is to start a car. Um, this is just one element of the, the symbolic universe. This is one symbol, a thing that holds meaning. And I give, use this stupid example, I'm going to put it away. I use this stupid example to show you the, how mundane the symbolic universe is and also how pervasive it is. Now, think about that key. And now think about the other things that were around the key when you picked one up today. Probably cups and plates and knives and forks and if it was in your kitchen the refrigerator and all of these things every particular thing that you encountered in that room and then when you left that room every single one of them had a meaning a, a meaning attached to it um, every single one of those things was a symbol and so you can start to get a sense for how big the symbolic universe is. And just like that key, um, you have to be a part of a society that defines it a certain way in order to understand how to use it. Um, when I teach this, this, uh, the symbolic universe in classrooms, I will, I will walk over to the door and I will say, if you had never been in this room before, take a look at the room you're in right now. If you'd never been in this room before, how would you know to get out? What would be your way out? Most of the time, windows have bigger, like sort of natural looking openings than doors do, but we never make the mistake of going out the window. But if I'd never been inside before, the, probably my first choice would be to go out the window. In fact, I'm going to show you the room that I'm in right now. So it's got that huge window right there. But if I turn us around and look at the door, the door has these really small windows. I couldn't even get my head out there. Um, if I'd never been in a room before, this would be the most natural seeming way to get out. I just get past those blinds and I'm out the door, or I'm out the window. Uh, the idea here is that we use, let me see if I've got you relatively straight. Sorry about that. I don't want to make you seasick. Uh, the idea behind the symbolic universe is that everything holds meaning. If you saw the movie The Matrix, which if you haven't seen the movie The Matrix, go see the movie The Matrix. Um, if, you, if you're not interested, you could Google or go to YouTube and use the uh, type in Neo sees the code. And what that happens in that scene, I'm not giving a ton of stuff away, is that in the movie The Matrix, everybody is inside of a computer simulation. Everything has been coded for them to interpret. Um, and there's this 
brief moment in the movie where one character, actually he doesn't see the physical object, so it wouldn't be like seeing the whiteboard. What he sees instead is all of the code that produces the whiteboard, or as we're going to talk about it, the meaning behind the physical thing. This whiteboard right here isn't appreciably different than the white wall behind it, but we know because of being a member of this society, that one of these things, sorry, hold on one second, that one of these things is appropriate to write on and the other one isn't. One thing holds the meaning, this is what, you, what a teacher writes on, and the other thing doesn't, even though physically they're almost exactly the same thing. All right, so the symbolic universe is everything that holds meaning according to a society, and what you have to get your mind around is that literally everything, including me, and not, like, I hold the meaning to you right now of your teacher in this sociology course, but there's other meanings that are attached to me, just like you could think about code being on me. I am a middle-aged man. That means something different than a teenage boy or than an elderly man. Um, I'm white, and that means something, unfortunately, in our society different than, uh, than being black or being Latino or being Asian American. Um, I'm male rather than, rather than female, and I mean, certainly every woman who's watching this will say, yeah, that obviously means something different because people will treat me in different ways based on my womanness than I will be treated based on my maleness. So, um... Uh, I think that's all I want to say about that. Uh, the, the, the point I'm trying to illustrate is literally everything you encounter holds meaning in a society. And, that's, and all of those things, you take them all together, they comprise the symbolic universe. Now, why, where this is pertinent to our particular class right now is the idea of organizations. Organizations are what we are going to call fictional symbols. We've talked about or you read in Sapiens the idea that they are imagined into existence, but they still hold meaning. If I say uh, the corporation Apple to you, there is a particular meaning that is associated with that. The, the fictional organization holds the meaning of being a capitalistic organization that creates cool, innovative technology. Uh, the United States government is a fictional organization, and it holds a particular meaning, and it holds a different meaning than the Russian government. Um, so organizations are symbols. Uh, they exist within this symbolic universe, um, and they hold particular meanings. Uh, and I think that is, oh, one last point. Sorry, one last point. So this is what I've gone through so far. The definition of the symbolic universe, everything that holds meanings. What it's comprised of, symbols, like individual things that hold meanings. And they could be uh, real, like a physical object, like a whiteboard. They could be... Uh, they could be attributes that a person has, like my white skin or my maleness. They could be fictional things uh, that exist, like organizations, which is where we're going to spend a lot of our time in this class, obviously. Um, so we've got those things. The last point in this video, and then I'll stop and move on to something else, is the purpose of the symbolic universe. And this uh, is worth me belaboring for just a moment. So you get inserted into this machine, and part of this machine is the symbolic universe. What is the role that the symbolic universe plays within the machine? Here's the role it plays. The purpose is that it defines reality. We have a particular symbolic universe, and therefore we understand reality in a particular way. I'm going to contrast this in a very, very harsh way. In American society, one of the symbols is women, and another symbol is school. And in our symbolic universe, those two things can coexist well. Women belong in school. In the traditional uh, Afghani or uh, the tr traditional Taliban society, the symbol of woman is partially defined as 
not needing or not being appropriate for education. And there are girls and women who have been stoned to death based on that particular symbolic universe, that particular meaning assigned to women and education. Now, where this is going to come out the other side, what gets produced, and you can kind of see it, is particular thoughts. I have the thought women belong in my class because, not because I'm a good person, but because I'm a human being who was inserted into a machine where that is a, a thought that would be produced by those few symbols working together. Had I been born into Taliban society, the same human being biologically would come to a completely different thought. Why? Because I'm suddenly a bad human being? No, because this symbolic universe produces those particular thoughts. The symbolic universe defines reality. Trip yourself out for a little bit. Don't not for a long time, but thinking about the fact that you would have different thoughts in your head had you been inserted into a different society than the one we have with a different symbolic universe. All right, that's it. Sorry, this went a little bit longer than I intended, but that deep thought at the end was definitely worth it. Uh, I will see you next time, and we will fill in another quadrant in our machine. See you then.